So I have over 300 hours into Castle Crashers and I have done some pretty crazy challenges this past year. And with all these hours and challenges, I feel like I've gotten much better at the game. So I really wanted to put myself to the test and see if I could beat Castle Crashers without taking damage. I'm sure future me wouldn't regret this. So before we get into the run, let's go over the rules for this challenge. First and foremost, I cannot take any damage. That means no hits from enemies and no damage from the environment. And finally, glitches are allowed. But with the rules set, the Grey Knight falling down the stairs, we can get into this run. So I went for the Blue Knight since he can freeze enemies. Some Something that is going to greatly help this run. So for the first part of the game, I don't really have to worry about anything since it's pretty easy to not take damage. And being the Giga Chad gamer that I am, I was able to defeat the War Machine and Barbarian boss without taking damage once. So I saved the Red Princess and I put all of my skill points into strength since I didn't really need to freeze enemies this early into the game. Moving into Forest Entrance and looking at this group of enemies, who do you think caused the most problems? Yeah, so Gator Boy here was pretty annoying, but we soon went past this and got into Thieves Forest. Now in Thieves Forest, you'll probably think I had a difficult time, since there are many thieves, a difficult boss fight, and of course, Seahorse. But on my first try, I was able to get to the Troll Mother without any issues. And for the Troll Mother, I actually beat her on my first attempt. I achieved this by simply ignoring her and focusing on her children. By keeping them in a constant juggle and moving left and right, the Troll Mother can't help but wander into damage. And since I've put everything into strength, each hit was doing a sizable chunk on her health bar. And pretty quickly, she was defeated. But I did practice many hours of this for no stat insane. For the chase scene, I was able to get through the entire area without taking any damage. Partly due to my 10 tips video, link in the description. We soon landed in the river which was our first challenge since there are many things that just want to damage you and eventually we did get onto the catfish boss fight and let's see how that went wow that was okay that was easy i think catfish has to be one of the easiest bosses in the game so let's see how the bear boss fares you'll have your reset cast catcher would be something if i reset if i wow oh wow boss Boss fight, by the way. Uh-huh. For a challenge run, this has surprisingly gone smooth. In fact, I'm pretty confident that we're not going to struggle too much on this challenge run. But with the catfish and bear boss defeated, let's see how PP Shadow fares. Yep. That's about the average PP Shredder fight. Honestly, at this point, it felt like we were just doing a regular playthrough, since it's pretty easy to not get hit. In fact, we got all the way to the Groom boss fight without taking any damage. Please, Groom, please just hit me once. Next was the carriage chase scene, and if I showed you this image, who do you think damages me here? Myself. Of course it's myself. But soon after defeating the giant troll, we run into a massive problem. The carriage goes into a cave, and we get knocked off of it. The problem is, we cannot avoid this one damage. So to progress, we just had to take the one damage. So if you truly wanted to find out if you can beat Castle Crashers without taking damage, then the answer is no. But let's be real, most of you are here to see me suffer. So so we continue with the run and move into the cave, which just so happens to have some of the most annoying enemies in the game. So in this cave, we had to deal with thieves that love to shoot their arrows. We had coneheads who love to throw their bombs, and just for good measure, let's throw some cave slimes in there too. This combination of enemies are a nightmare. With so many ranged attacks coming from pretty much anywhere, avoiding damage was very difficult. We did have to restart a few times, but eventually we were able to move on to the hardest level in the game, Cyclops Gate, where we had to avoid these extremely difficult spurts of lava. And on top of that, all the enemies in this area are completely invisible, meaning we can't see where the attacks are coming from. So after spending three hours on this one area alone, we were finally able to get past it and move on to Cyclops Fortress. For the first few waves of Coneheads, I simply just heavy juggled them since it's a pretty good way of doing damage without taking any yourself. And for the fire demon and boss cone head, I used my ice projectile to freeze them and keep them at a distance. This allowed me to do damage to both enemies without having to worry about them attacking me. Moving on to the Cyclops boss fight, there are two damage phases. You have his melee damage phase and his throwing knife phase. 
For the melee phase, he'll do 4 attacks with large damage windows in between. This is where we want to get our damage in. And for the throwing knife phase, we simply just had to hold our shield up. This fight overall is pretty easy to do without taking damage. In fact, you'd have to be throwing to take damage. Oh, oh no, I just threw! But on the second attempt, we did it without any issue. Next is Lava World, and there are quite a few things here that want to damage us. Mainly, avoiding the lava and the fire demons were our number one priority. And using medium juggle, the fire demons weren't an issue. The problem was when he arrived. So even before his boss fight, the necromancer is still causing problems. As when fighting the newly resurrected skeletons, I did get a bow to the face. But on my second attempt, I did bone the skeletons back and made it all the way to the volcano. Now the volcano was surprisingly hard to defeat without taking damage. You of course have the fireballs you have to avoid, and there are also two fire demons that will never go away. You had to be beefy to damage the volcano, and when you are beefy, it is a lot harder to not take damage, since you have massively reduced movement speed. In an ideal situation, we want the fire demons to be on the other side of the volcano during our damage phase, but of course, they weren't going to do that forever. So the fight ended up being this awkward dance trying to avoid the fire demons whilst damaging in the volcano and of course there was some wackiness too but on our first attempt we were able to defeat the volcano meaning all we had to do was fight the dragons except we didn't really have to fight the dragons there's an extremely easy glitch which allowed you to avoid the dragon fight completely and being a regular at weenie hut jr this is of course what i did this is where i really want to know your guys opinions do you think we should use glitches in these challenge runs do let me know in the comments below but after another delay delicious meal at Weenie Hut Juniors, we were on to the industrial castle. Now for this area, the only real problem we had to worry about was the elevator, since there are a lot of enemies and not a lot of room. And on our first attempt, we did take damage and had to do it again. On the second attempt, we did take a sword blade to the face and had to try again for a third time. We made it past the traps, made it up the elevator and all the way to the brew. Now since we were on the blue knight, we are able to just freeze enemies from a distance and the brute is no exception. So we simply just sat back and froze the brute over and over. I'm sure the brute won't come back. And for the industrial machine, with some simple juggling and ice projectile, we were able to defeat it without any issues. Now in my last challenge run, the industrial prince was spared for the very first time ever. So maybe things were finally looking up for the prince. So anytime I do a challenge run, I do stream them. And sometimes these runs can take multiple days and streams. And in one stream, I ended it on the industrial castle, which is the one where the prince died. But for some reason, on my next stream, we redid the industrial castle again. And on this attempt, the prince lived. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know. Back to the video. We crossed the ocean with no issue and made it into the desert. Ah, <sighs> the desert. For this challenge run, the desert isn't bad. Going through it, we just had to be cautious of the scorpions, since they are unlimited and will always hit you if you get too close. And then our first attempt, we did get hit by a scarab whilst it was underground. On the second attempt, we got hit by a royal guard. And on the third, an ant lion. But on our fourth attempt, we were able to defeat all the ant lions, all the scarabs, and all the royal guards. Meaning we'd finally beaten the desert. Oh, hold on, th this is for me. Hello? Yeah, we beat the desert. What's that? There's more. Okay. So yeah, the desert isn't over, since we now have two boss fights. Luckily though, the aliens were one shot and the bosses themselves were pretty weak, meaning on our first attempt here, we did get onto the alien ship. On the alien ship, you'd think we'd struggle since it's a one hit run and there are many enemies. But since all of them were one shot, we were able to just juggle around the arena, avoiding being hit by the blasters. We moved on to Sandcastle, and for the beefies at the start, we simply used our ice projectile. But we couldn't always rely on this, since the game really wants me to fail. In fact, I really struggled on the upper Sandcastle, since at the time, I didn't know I could block the Saracen's tornadoes with my shield. If I had known that, I would have had a much easier time here. But after many resets, we did get 
onto the volleyball game where I made sure I stood far behind the line, since the enemies can still hit you here. But after a comfortable 10-5 win, we could finally move on to the marsh. Now, in the marsh, we get to see our good friend the Necromancer a second time. And not surprisingly at all, he makes our life hell, since he once again resurrects more skeletons but make sure to add some beefies in there too. This was very difficult to do without taking any damage, and caused us to reset many times. Ultimately, I changed my pet to Rami, which would knock enemies over, reducing the chances of me being cornered, and this change made a massive difference, since we were able to combine my freezing with Rami's ramming, allowing us to defeat the enemies without taking any damage. I made sure to leave the area and then re-enter, so I didn't have to fight the enemies again. I embarrassed the troll mother for a second time and eventually moved on to the corn boss. Not only does the corn boss have one of the largest health bars out of any boss in the game, it also has very short damage windows and a move that can reflect your melee damage back meaning melee was not a choice here. So I ultimately decided to go full magic as I grabbed the unicorn horn and the beholder. This will give me the largest magical boost. Although the blue knight's magic is great at taking out beefies and normal enemies, it kind of sucks against large bosses. At max magic, the blue knight can only use their splash magic twice and it does a pitiful amount of damage. This left us with only one viable damage source, projectile magic. And on my first attempt, I managed to get the corn boss down to less than half health, but I stupidly misclicked my button and took some damage. And on the second attempt, the exact same thing happened. On the third attempt, we got the corn boss to one shot, so surely we did it, right? Oh, oops. <laughs> <sighs> so on the fourth attempt, we managed to get the corn boss down to one shot again. And do you remember when I said that it can reflect your damage back at you? <clears throat> A few more resets later, and we managed to get the corn boss to one shot again again. Surely we had it this time. The problem was, when the corn boss has a small amount of health left, it will get enraged, meaning attacks get faster and the corn boss likes to go in and out the ground constantly, meaning we didn't have time to get our projectile magic off. But in the end, I remembered that Bipolar Bear exists. Now, Polar Bear will instantly kill any enemies that are 8% or lower health, meaning we could skip the enraged mode entirely. So after picking up Polar Bear, we were able to do it without any real issue. But I'll never be able to regain my sanity. With the horn acquired, we could finally move on to Medusa. Like Cyclops, Medusa has some large predictable damage windows. By standing close to her, the only thing that could damage you is this one snake, and it can be blocked with your shield. So I simply attacked between blocking this snake and very quickly Medusa was defeated. Next was Full Moon and this could definitely be an issue. Having to fight off beefies and avoid falling borders definitely posed a challenge. We did have to reset a few times but we were able to move further up Full Moon where we could finally use Ladder Strat. Combining Ladder Strat with our Ice Elemental Infusion made it an extremely easy fight. In fact, we managed to defeat all these enemies on our first attempt. Moving into Snow World and our biggest issue were the many, many snowballs. But what made this level manageable was the fact that the Ice Skimmers are a light juggle, meaning they are relatively easy to take out. And for the Ice Skimmers behind the ice barriers, we could actually select which ones we wanted to fight, meaning we could fight them one at a time. This made going through the stages a lot easier. And on our first try, we were able to make it all the way to the Frost King. Out of all the challenge runs I've done so far, Frost King has never been a notable boss, but for a no-hit run, Frost King is no joke. Let's start with a boss run. Every time we wanted to attempt the Frost King, we had to run past these falling icicles. Then we had to cross an ice bridge, which could either shoot arrows or ice. We had to defeat three ice skimmers, and then finally, we could have an attempt at the Frost King. And for the boss fight, what made this whole thing awful was the slippery floor. 
I cannot express how much I hate the slippery floor. For the Frost King's attacks, he only has three moves. The first one being this long summoning of ice, the second one being a fast ice attack, and the third one being icicles falling from the roof. A problem that I kept running into was not knowing what attack he was going to do, but often I would go straight in for the attack the second he teleported without realising it was his fast ice attack. But what made this fight extremely difficult was the icicles. When you get the Frost King's health to about 60%, he will summon icicles from the roof, and these icicles persist even through his other attacks. This means you have to constantly be moving to avoid being hit. And to top it all off, the Frost King teleports more than an Enderman in water. It can't get worse, can it? Oh yes it can, because when you get the Frost King to about 10% health, the icicles go into steroid mode. I spent hours on this boss. And on the attempts that I did it, it honestly seemed to just be good RNG. Since on one of the attacks, he didn't spawn any icicles, allowing me to get a large chunk of damage. And learning from my mistakes with the calm boss, I made sure to have Polar Bear to avoid the last phase annoyance, which meant I could finally move on to the last section of the game. The first boss is the Painter, and he isn't too bad. The Painter himself doesn't actually attack you, instead he summons paintings that will try and touch you. Coming into contact with a painting will cause him to explode and do a large amount of damage. So I simply spam my melee for the Painter, and when it came to his paintings, I used my magic. It wasn't ideal damage, but it was safe and easy. And before the Painter could even get to his final phase, he was defeated. Next was the Undead Cyclops, and this fight is even easier. Like the regular Cyclops fight, there are two phases the melee phase and the fireball phase but this time however there is an extra phase the cyclops will summon the groom and we cannot do any damage to neither boss normally i would use pp ground strat to just wait this phase out but that involves taking damage so i simply just ran around the arena avoiding contact with either boss and after a few phases bipolar bear decided he'd had enough and finished off the cyclops so out of the four final bosses, the first was easy and the second was even easier. Let's see how the third boss is. Oh dear. So next is the Necromancer and so far in this run he's caused us problems twice. And the third time is no different. The fight starts with a wave of enemies. This part is relatively easy, there's only one enemy that we really have to look out for and that's the Conehead, since he's a heavy juggle and can't be juggled like the rest. The second phase is where the problem is. The Necromancer will summon even more enemies and three beefies. Normally, I use the fly strategy to stay in the air, avoiding any enemies, but the beefies are able to grab you no matter how high you are. So on top of this fight already being insanely difficult, there's a layer of RNG too. We died many, many times. And throughout my many hours attempting this challenge, I tried a few different strats. I tried flying close to the back of the wall so I could line up the enemies and use my magic to hopefully kill them. I tried killing the regular enemies before moving on to the beefies. I even found a strat that involved sitting in this corner and waiting for the beefies to come underneath me. I would then drop my bombs, hopefully killing them in that moment. But this was very inconsistent, sometimes working really well and sometimes not. Oh yeah, did I mention every time we died we had to rerun through three waves of cult minions? So it took a good few minutes just to get another attempt at the boss. But after so many hours, we finally defeated both waves of enemies without taking damage. So as the necromancer fell into the fight, I jumped and meleeed him, catching him in a light juggle. I blissfully juggled the necromancer around his own arena, and what felt like a lifetime, the necromancer was finally defeated. And I can finally rest, knowing that this runs over. Wait, that wasn't the final boss? So the final boss was the evil wizard, and he's kind of a joke. There are six different phases you have to fight. The first phase was extremely easy. By standing at the bottom of the screen, the crystals couldn't even damage me, meaning I could kill them in one phase. For the second phase, I simply just waited for the blue bubble, using my ice projectile to do damage. The third phase was... 
well the third phase. For the fourth phase, you are able to actually get out of his range of damage, meaning I simply just had to fly next to him, allowing me to do damage, but be safe at the same time. The fifth phase is the fifth phase and to give the wizard credit the sixth phase wasn't that easy since in the final phase the wizard likes to move around a lot making it quite hard to get consistent damage now i did reset a surprisingly amount of times on this boss fight and definitely out of any challenge run i've done this was the hardest evil wizard fight although i was rushing this fight as i really wanted to end the run so i can't give him too much credit so if i took my time i probably could have done this in a lot less attempts but I eventually got fed up and decided to just cheese the final phase. With some careful positioning, you could line up the evil wizard with this wall, and by dashing into the wall, you could instantly kill him. And with the evil wizard defeated, I landed on the crystal, caught the princess, and I could finally, finally end this run. 